Like all other directors, Christopher Nolan has particular themes that are always present in his movies. The theme that I have found to be present in virtually every Nolan film is sacrifice. What Nolan does so well is that he shows us more than just the beauty of the sacrifice. Nolan isn't afraid to also show us the ugly side of these sacrifices. Just to give a few examples, in Interstellar, a man must sacrifice time spent with his family to go on a mission to save humanity. In Inception, a man sacrifices his wife's trust so they can be with their children, but this leads to his wife not knowing what the truth is. Throughout the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman gives up any aspirations of living a normal life and spending time with those he loves, so that he can fight crime and protect the ordinary citizens of Gotham. In The Prestige, we have men who try their absolute hardest to have the best magical act, but this comes at the price of their relationships with those around them. I could go on about his other films, but this element of sacrifice is definitely a recurring theme in Nolan's work, and he doesn't stop with Oppenheimer. I would go so far as to say that Oppenheimer's sacrifice may be the most intense of all of Nolan's films. Here we have a man who has created a seeming paradox a device with so much destructive capability that after its use, all war will come to an end. The problem is with that one part that I mentioned there, after its use. In order for the war to stop, the atomic bomb must be used to pressure the Japanese into surrendering. And while the characters weigh the consequences of dropping or not dropping the bomb, it doesn't change that no matter the outcome, there will be bloodshed and there will be guilt. We all know what happens, but whether this sacrifice of Oppenheimer's was worth it is ultimately left up to us. And with that, let's dive into this aspect of Oppenheimer, where Nolan leaves us to be the judge. Oppenheimer is presented with a classic moral dilemma. Think of the infamous trolley problem. You have a lever in front of you. You see a train barreling toward five people tied down on the track. Do nothing and those five people will get run over. However, if you pull the lever, the train will go to another track and only run over one innocent person. Oppenheimer is met with the same dilemma. He can develop a nuclear weapon and possibly put a stop to World War II, or he can do nothing and lead to the death of more American lives. The issue with the trolley problem is there is seemingly no good choice, because no matter what you do, there is blood on your hands, and this is very much the same in the case of Oppenheimer. If he does nothing, then countless American soldiers will die doing an invasion of Japan and he will have the guilt since he could have prevented that. If he does something and creates the atomic bomb, then the blood of the Japanese and innocent civilians will be on his hands. Now you could argue that the blood should not be on Oppenheimer's hands since, as Truman points out, he isn't the one who orders its detonation. But this isn't the way Oppenheimer sees it. Oppenheimer views himself as the man who made such a weapon possible by bringing it into existence, and thus he views himself as primarily responsible. However, Oppenheimer had somewhat of an idea going into this that there would be guilt and brutality involved. Granted, he wasn't 100% sure if the bombs would even be used, but a man as brilliant as him definitely knew that it was a possibility, and he willingly took that risk. 
The reason why Oppenheimer would create the atomic bombs when he knew the destructive capabilities they posed is explained early on in the film. When we see Oppenheimer saying that it's better for the United States to have such weapons as opposed to other countries. He also recognizes that such a weapon could bring about the end of all war. Despite these positives of the weapon though, Oppenheimer still feels bad about the use of his creation. We see him feeling extremely guilty after the bombs have been dropped, and the genius bleacher scene shows how his conscience is getting to him. All the while, he still has to maintain this persona to please the American public. When Oppenheimer is giving his speech in this scene, we can see that he's essentially saying the exact opposite of what he truly believes. And with each word that he utters, the visions and guilt intensify. We can even see some elements of PTSD where the feet stomping on the bleachers mimic the sounds of the bombs, and how Oppenheimer confuses the crowd's cheers for screaming. Oppenheimer completely zones out as to what's happening to him in the moment, and it's truly a brilliant scene from Nolan, and it may just be my favorite from the movie. Returning to the idea of sacrifices, Nolan displays to us how Oppenheimer had a choice to make between being a bystander and letting his fellow countrymen die, or being an active participant and having to bear more responsibility in regards to the bloodshed. As we all know, Oppenheimer sided with the latter, and while his interviews suggest that he doesn't know if there was any better option, he still hates what happened. We see the sacrifice here of a man who decided that punishing his conscience and putting the blood on his own hands was better than spilling that of his fellow compatriots. This is Oppenheimer's sacrifice, to torture himself with the guilt of such an atrocity that in turn saved lives. Throughout the movie, time and time again, we see Oppenheimer looking for some consolation, to be pardoned from his self-imposed crimes. He views the kangaroo court he is forced into as a way to expiate his sins. And this is why his wife says to him that being tarred and feathered won't grant him forgiveness. I also want to discuss the effectiveness of presenting a flawed protagonist and how this makes us much less inclined to immediately sympathize with Oppenheimer. Nolan does a great job of giving us characters who we root for but at the same time can't advocate for, and a great example of this would be Detective Dormer in Insomnia. No spoilers here, but in the movie, we quickly learn that Dormer is a flawed detective who sometimes bends the rules to fit his judgments. I'm speaking in code here as to not spoil the movie, but if you have seen it, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Dormer is on the surface somewhat reprehensible, yet the audience still wants for him to succeed. Nolan, again, presents to us a flawed but charismatic protagonist, but he ramps it up as Oppenheimer is much more reprehensible than Dormer is. In history and subsequently the film, we see that Oppenheimer is an adulterer, a showman with an ego, and a practically non-existent father. He even says early on in the film that his lack of moral character is made up for by his brilliance. These flaws establish that Oppenheimer is not your typical good guy. Hell, you could argue that he's not even good. The reason why Oppenheimer not being your typical righteous hero is so important is because when his decisions about the Manhattan Project and atomic bomb are made, we are much more reluctant to immediately side with him. We have seen him make plenty of mistakes in the past, and as a result, we are more critical of his choices. And this makes judging his sacrifice much more nuanced and difficult. In other Nolan films, where the protagonist is much more charismatic and likable, think Inception or Interstellar, we don't hold their sacrifices against them nearly as much. 
Oppenheimer presents to us the classic question of whether the ends justify the means, and it gives us probably the best historical example as it pertains to this question. Through the advent of nuclear weapons, war and death have subsequently decreased through the fear of mutually assured destruction. Yet if we analyze the way we got there, through the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we are still not confident in saying that this was an excusable evil for this outcome. So many people died, and many of them were innocent civilians, just like me and you. And even if they didn't die, the effects of radiation likely ruined their life and that of their progeny. Had the bombings been conducted today, they would have been classified as war crimes. And through humanity's typical honor codes, you don't attack innocent women and children, but these bombs didn't discriminate. I'm not saying which side of the fence I am on, but I'm just trying to present both perspectives of the issue equally, as Nolan does in the film. I believe a hypothetical will also help in presenting this issue. If you could stop all murders from happening through murdering an innocent person yourself, would you do it? This is essentially what Oppenheimer had to deal with, and judging from his actions, he would say yes to this question. But even through saving countless lives in the future, examining what it took to get you there would still haunt you. This is the primary issue that Nolan displays in Oppenheimer. And while the movie covers a variety of other topics like theory versus implementation and the vanity of those that control us, we can't overlook this crucial moral dilemma in Oppenheimer. As I mentioned before, Nolan does a fantastic job of giving us these scenarios where it's left up to us whether a character's sacrifice was ultimately worth it, and I'll leave you with the same question. This movie is being touted as Nolan's best, and while there may be some recency bias at play, it certainly is amazing. This movie really adds a thriller component to the biopic, which seems to distinguish it in the genre, and it gives it a X factor. Or should I say the sex factor, because I'm only rewatching for Florence Pugh's t Okay, I'm sorry, that was out of pocket, especially considering that I was serious for the rest of this video. Nonetheless, Oppenheimer is an amazing film, and I definitely plan on re-watching this in the theaters while I still have the chance. These are just some of my takeaways from my first viewing toward the moral dilemma presented in Oppenheimer, and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this movie in the comments below. What do you think of Oppenheimer's sacrifice, and what are your thoughts on Nolan's portrayal of it? Thank you guys so much for watching, and please consider checking out some of my other videos. I love you all.